On the issue of the Sharia law, uh, I, I, you must understand that these are our state methods. That's, that's the first thing to understand. It's not something that you can push on that road. And the Sultan uh, jealously guided this. Jealously. And therefore, the uh, reforms will be slow. That's what they are cautioning. Because you have to deal with many, many rulers. This is relatively excessive. But what uh, I think would be different, I think, I'm not know if it's democracy of that day, if it's Islam that they do. And I think the it has been used as a political weapon. And when civil servants and majlis and government become the tool of politics, you, you make religion very, very uh, hard to do. And I think that's what has been happening. I think what we can do is that to let religion to dealt with the people who know the real scholars, real reforms taking place by people who know the, the jurisprudence of Islam, who understand the, the, the basic reform that is, that is required. So I think that is it. The emphasis will be I think we will not be that powerless to, to use my data karma and all that for purposes of emphasis. And I think that is one way to ensure that Sharia will be. More uh, adaptable and more progressive. I also want to tell you that the system is not true that Sharia is superior or has got more rights than the civil law. No. Uh, what we have a problem in, in the areas of conflict, as we have experienced in the divorce cases, custody, where you know, they convert, where Muslim converts then became. Go back to the origin of the religion, the land and the laws. And then the issue then of how do you sort out the custody, which will be the new law of the law. Now, all these cases, actually, the Constitution has laid it out in the The courts have set it out before. But because the judges have become sensitive to political people, and sensitive to uh, 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 what they perceive to be a public thing, they therefore become reluctant to set the law. But this goes back to the issue of the values of the Jewish, the quality of the values. Mention the Constitution. You see, Islam is a creature of the Constitution, you must understand. The Constitution confers that power to the state to do Islam law. So you can never have a situation where the state that overrules the federal You cannot. Or rather, the state supersedes so the federal constitution. You can have lousy judges making a statement. You can have idiotic people making a statement. You can have power making a statement. But the system now has been quite set in the early days. And I believe that because we respect the rule of law and we respect the Constitution, we will go back to that fundamental rule. And therefore, the Constitution is supreme in our country. That, that is something you have to accept. Once you accept that, then it is okay to say the Constitution. So any law that contradicts a why it? That's the Constitution. That is it's not a law. But because you have judges who are reluctant to declare or to make a stand, then you have this fear or you've created this, this confusion with the Sharia to be the civil court of rule You know? The, the amendment to the Constitution that Matters of Islam are within the purview of the Sharia, and the civil court have no jurisdiction. These are jurisdictional divisions. But that's okay, because the Constitution gives you that jurisdiction. It's okay for you to have finality in respect of those areas given to you. So the Sharia court, being a state court, can decide so long as it does not violate the Constitution. So I want to show you the constitutional framework. That. What we need the leaders to understand and prepare to defend the sanctity of the process. And everybody, every religion, is starting to the to protect them. So I don't think you need to. The, the problem today is because of that political will, because politicians play religion for their extra roles, and so on and so forth. And therefore, you have you lost control over the subject. So it becomes sensitive, it becomes delicate. I mean, let, let's look at the word Allah. Let's look at the use of the word Allah. You know, for many years, for many years, the Christian believers, 
Fifth year, have a drink. And don't what? Press it. Muslims don't get affected by it. The Muslims in South Africa don't get affected where they should because that's where they use a lot. Because the Christians, the Dayat, the Kibas, the Christians, the Lord. The people in Sarawak don't get affected. Eh? But how about they became a big issue? Because in 1987, <coughs> that, was that was the first time the Gazette would come. You can use these words, certain words, but they are Christian or Tentative or something. You can't hear them. But in the context of propagation, in the context of law, you cannot use that to propagate, to propagate, to convert. So you can't use certain words. That was the, 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 the regulation. But the group that the civil service, the politicians, took that all the way and started enforcing it, or you can't use it. It becomes a ridiculous situation where you don't say the national anthem was wrong, you have to say, Allah's time, so that can be. So you can't use the word Allah. Was meant for purposes of conversion. So, what I'm going to tell you, a lot of the problems in our country is because either they learn or they deliberately use that for political purposes. So, again, the courts have decided all these things, the courts are competing to decide to do the right thing, and we will have the problems that we will have in research. Uh, that's not the end of the uh, where we're reaching the very, very end. If I don't want that, we're not good. Okay. All right. Uh, if I could ask uh, Brian to basically conclude the Q and A session for us, please. Um, Brian. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you to our distinguished speakers. Uh, you've been very inspiring. Uh, I must say that uh, we did not expect uh, the, this whole session to turn out the way it has. Uh, it was very inspiring for me. It's encouraging. I hope all of you felt that way. And uh, for you to have taken the trouble to spend all that money coming all the way here, it's always uh, a privilege that uh, we share. And uh, I thank all of you for having the patience to sit here and wait until 5 p.m. because we were debating this because we had so many speakers we want to have Q&A, we want to have lunch and we were thinking would everybody be able to sustain the interest and we are really encouraged to see uh, even at this time so many people still remaining. Thank you very much and thank you very much for our audience.